Here's a plant I've been coming through for a long time. Not a species, but a specific individual. This is a Asclepius californica. It's probably a four or five year old plant. You can see he's got a got a little uh, seedling going on up there under that uh, Artemisia californica. Okay, California sagebrush. This thing fucking smells great. All right, great, uh, relative of Great Basin sage. Anyway, Asclepius californica. You can see this guy's coming out now. It's a little early, all right, uh, to see this guy right now. It's, you know, not even April yet, but apparently he's been getting enough warmth where he is for the, you know, to uh, have triggered his, his, uh, rhizome to send out the shoots that is what you call a herbaceous perennial so the top tissue dies every year and then uh it stays alive of course uh, down there at the root so by august this will be pretty much completely dry these uh fruits will have matured into follicles little kidney shaped things that split open on one seam and uh, they will have dispersed their little uh wind dispersed seed uh, all over the place so anyway this is a pretty rare, I mean, I wouldn't say rare, it's it's not listed as rare, it's just you always see them, they tend to be pretty sporadic, okay? Only see one or two at a time. I've never seen a whole shit ton of these all at once. You can see he's got the uh, little uh, indumentum. I don't even know if you call that an indumentum. It looks like a goddamn bath towel, okay? The hair, the hair, of course, is so abundant on those leaves right there. You can see just, you know, just draping it, long, long-ass hairs. Okay, heavy pubescence, very tomentose. Now the flowers are, are incredible, okay? Inflorescence is an umbel. You can see even the damn, the little pedicels are covered in wool. Of course, that's to, you know, reduce uh, uh, leaf temperature and, uh, you know, due to incoming solar radiation as well as to keep that, those moisture levels uh, up within the tissues, you know, prevent those, those stomata from transpiring too much moisture. But the flower on milkweeds, again, is very incredible. So, uh, you know what you're looking at right there those got those five petals reflexed underneath that You got five sepals if you can see them there, but they're kind of see the little beige sepals They're not that showy the sepals aren't and then what you're looking at those five bubbly things. Those are the hoods All right, so you got a corona with five hoods and then a gynostegium in the central uh, in the center right there Okay, and in between those two little pink bubbles you got the stigmatic slit and that's where the pollinium comes out of. Now remember, milkweeds do not have uh, pollen, conventional pollen as most plants do, all right? It's not like you get a dusting of pollen. Like orchids, milkweeds put their damn pollen into two aggregated nodules called pollinia, okay? Pollinia, plural, pollinium, singular. And what a pollinator has to do, and he's gotta be a big one, is he's gotta stick his goddamn leg, he's gotta get it caught inside that stigmatic slit. If you could see it, it's just a little trapdoor slit in between those two pink bubbly things. See that little yellow slit right there? You could just faintly see it. This one might be a better one to show you. See that little yellow slit? That's the stigmatic slit. So the pollinator's got to get his foot in there, okay? And he gets lodged, the foot gets lodged in there, he's got to yank it out. And when he yanks it out, he'll have a little boomerang shaped, uh, uh, set of pollinia on it, okay? Looks like a boomerang with each end of the boomerang has a pollinium on it, okay? And then at the top of the boomerang, at the apex, you got the corpusculum, but you don't even need to know all that fancy terminology. So he's got to, he's got to swing out with that. Then he's got to go to another flower or she and, uh, and, and stick the goddamn foot with the scent. You'll, you'll see him sometimes. You'll see the honeybees with the pollinia on their damn legs. Looks real weird. And they gotta stick that pollinia in the, the stigmatic slit of the next flower to pollinate it. Okay, and then the stigma, of course, is inside that damn gynostegium. Very weird pollination syndrome, but what a beautiful group of plants, huh? And of course, that would be in the Asclepiodoidea subfamily of the oleander, horticultural atrocity, oleander family, Apocinaceae. So he's an Apocinaceous bastard. Beautiful goddamn flowers. You got a Sclepius solanoana, that's a rare one. Only get that on the serpentine. You got a Sclepius cordifolia up north. Uh a Sclepius uh you got a you got a bunch of a whole bunch of desert ones. Crazy ones. You got leafless goddamn desert milkweeds down there. Anyway, that's uh this is a Sclepius californica. Moving right along. Okay, so let's say that you're a plant and uh, you're growing in an area that is really only amenable to your growth for about four or five months out of the year. For the rest of the year, it's just too hot and too dry for you to do your thing. Now, there are a couple of different habits 
and uh, lifestyles you could take to cope with this such an environment for well you know for where 60 percent of the year it's just not really conducive to your growth uh, you know you could become an annual just a short-lived plant you grow real fast produce a ton of seed and then uh, die uh, you could uh, just uh, you could you know stay up uh, above uh, the ground you could just be a perennial woody plant that uh, you know just uh, it either it has succulents or finds a way to just cope with the heat you know just really minimizing moisture loss you know because you've got a bunch of wool and hair all over your goddamn leaves or whatnot or you just go drought deciduous uh, or you could uh, do the geophytic thing which a lot of plants in South Africa and uh, in central Chile as well as uh, central and southern California do which is just the uh, Put all that storage tissue to create the, you create through photosynthesis into a bulb or a corm in the ground. A bulb is just modified leaves, and a corm is just the modified stem tissue. So uh, what we're looking at right now is a plant that, that does the geophytic habit and does it oh so nicely. It forms a bulb in the ground, and it's really only doing its thing for about two or three months out of the year, and then it flowers, produces seed and then goes dormant again in that bulb. This is Fritillaria falcata. It's an extremely rare and localized plant, only known from a handful of locations in a few counties in Central California, and it only grows on this kind of habitat, which is that of a serpentine palace. So you can see that the substrate here is serpentine. It's just uh, you know, it's super rocky, and then you get a little bit of clay beneath, and it all comes from that source uh, rock up there which you could see just happens to fracture you know it, it fractures very easily and then it breaks down to about yay size and kind of remains that size until further weathering and that's what creates this talus habitat this plant you will not see growing anywhere else see there's some leaves that didn't flower yet you will not see this plant growing anywhere else except on this rocky talus substrate you won't see it growing on soil on just plain soil you won't see it growing uh, on flat ground. You always see it on these talus slopes, which are a pain in the ass to walk up. Now, it's in, a, it's in the lily family, Liliaceae, and it's, it's in the genus Fritillaria. There's a bunch of different species of Fritillaria. Okay, you get them in Iran. You get quite, a few, uh, get quite a few in Europe. You get a couple in Asia, and you get a shit ton here in California. You know, it's very, very diverse, very species rich in California. This is nice. Look at that guy sticking his, sticking his ass in there. The nectaries on the fritz are at the base of those petals where the baits meets the shoot. Look at that goddamn Corolla. Look at those. Look at the pattern on that periant. Nice blue glaucous leaves, very waxy. And that bulb is probably, I don't know, I'd say it's about six or seven inches down there. He's just really going for it. Look at those anthers on the one on the left. They haven't uh, dehissed yet and released all the pollen. Whereas the one on the right is already in a female female phase stigma receptive. Probably got a little bit of pollen left too. Oh yeah, there's there's one nice. Oh. Doesn't that make you feel better? Huh? This country today is a highly polarized cultural toilet. You know, jackasses on both sides, just spewing nonsensical opinions with no critical thought, just parroting shit they heard somewhere else. You know, it just kind of makes me want to puke or leave the country. Uh, and then you come out here and you look at that and you just, uh, you feel pretty, you feel pretty good. Look, those anthers are old. It's already, this guy's already done. So he's, he's about finishing up. Two or three days that pairing it will fall off and you'll get a little three load capsule tiny and then it'll grow and grow and then about June or July it'll uh, be dry and then dehiss and dump out a bunch of seeds. See that those anthers ain't dehissed yet. Okay? It's not at full anthesis. Huh? Look how tiny this bastard is. So easy to fuck this up. You know, you get a bunch of mooks coming up here trying to look at stuff or worse yet cattle. You should have seen one. There's a population down a road just got destroyed by cattle. Just got fucking torn apart. Because some rednecks out, you know, he probably has no idea, to his credit, 
Though there are some in this state who would do it spitefully. They'd, they'd let their cattle graze on a, on his shit. But, uh, you know, to his credit, he don't know. Okay? He probably don't know, but he's, he's letting his cattle goddamn graze and they're just fucking, you know, it looks like landmines went off on the slope back there. Just boom. You know, a fucking 1200 pound heifer. And I'm not talking about any people, though I could be talking about some people in this country though. That's true. You could be talking about that. Okay, but a 1200 pound heifer, you know, just one of the animals that are just bred to be incredibly stupid. You know, just come in here and just rip the, you know, just munch it right off. They'd probably get the goddamn bulb. They'd probably pull the goddamn bulb off, too. Okay, so look at this. Okay, see, this This is... Look at those anthers right there. That's that's a beautiful goddamn plant. And this guy, he's already dehissed his anthers. He's already dropped them. See that? And it, that he's got that three-lobe style in the center ready to receive pollen. No, he didn't even drop his anthers. They're still on there. They're just old. Huh? So easy to just, you know, destroy this. You know, like, like too many things, unfortunately, because there's just too many fucking people, and, uh, you know, we're everywhere. And uh, you could just, uh, you know, <laughs> it's fucking the tragedy of the modern world. A bunch of softies, and there's too many of them, and they kill everything, you know. But I don't, let's not go there, okay? We don't need to go there. We could just enjoy this flower for what it is, okay? Because I come out here, and it makes me feel uh, less angry and less homicidal. You know, it calms down some of that, uh, como se dice, male aggression, okay? It's okay to feel like that, you know? You could be, you know, some of my best friends are, are butch lesbians that have a lot of male aggression. I love them for it, you know, because you're combining some of the softer elements. And don't be afraid to be soft. It's nice to be soft sometimes. But you're also not letting yourself get walked on. That's why, you know, a lot of butch lesbians I tend to, to gravitate towards, you know, much more so than the meatheads. I just tend to prefer, but that's just my personal preference, you know. I guess it depends. Fucking, look at this. The shrub oaks, too. Huh? Is that Quercus dumosa? Love these. Now, another serpentine endemic. Oh, that's a beaut. I'm hesitant. You know, I don't even want to, I'm not even going to go any further. Because look, this is what they look like when they, when they come up. They're just little blades of grass. You know, little blades of grass. You got some allium. The one on the right's an allium. Got kind of a circular leaf blade. And then it's a frit. This one on the frit. There's one of the frits too. Yeah, I don't even want to go any further because I'm just going to fuck it up. Too fragile. You come out here in July, you're fine. But come out here now when they're doing their thing. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Hope you have a nice time. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, maybe I offended you. That's good, too. That's pretty nice over there. Look at that. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Go fuck yourself. Have a lovely evening. Uh, wash your ass. Stay safe. Bye. You see, this This is how you do it. See how easy this stuff breaks off? That's how you create the fertile area of Falcata habitat. Okay? Just come up here with a hammer and break a bunch of it. You should take buckets of this and go dump it at the nearest golf course. You create more uh, more habitat for the fritz, you know? Or better yet, just take a giant uh, truckload of this, go dump it in a Walmart parking lot. You know, preferably late at night so you're not disturbing anybody. Okay, well, I guess you'd be disturbing the geriatrics that live there, you know? Because all the geriatrics, they park their goddamn RVs in a in a Walmart uh, parking lot and stuff, you know? And you just come, you're just trying to come there and dump garbage. And, you know, they're already taking the space up now see this is too exposed of a site right here where it's over in a tree line a little bit that's where they are but over here it's too exposed you're not going to find no fertile area falcata so this is actually a good uh this is a good place to go down you know which is actually pretty fun you just want to stay away from the uh pure rock escarpments you know so you can kind of just surf down and it's good. I think it's a good thing. There's no, there's no plants here at all. Oh yeah. There we go. See that? That's nice. I made him wait down at the bottom, but now he's gonna try and get his lard ass up. Come here. Hey, come here, you little sausage. You like a little sausage on stilts? Come here. I got it. Hey, 
I got pepperoni up here for you. I always tease him about his weight. I shouldn't. He knows I'm just joking around, though. He don't take it wrong. Okay. I did. I'm going to stop here, though, and show you this, because this, this is a nice plant. It's a species in a brace of casea. I'm just going to stop my descent, you know. Just stop. This is a species in a brace of casea. It's a species of erisimum. They call them wallflowers. Look at that. You got those four petals, okay, typical brassica. Probably a lot of, uh, you know, bitter secondary chemistry in those leaves in case you want to gnaw on them. Foranocoumarin sometimes. Oh, that's pretty good. And uh, didanimous stamens. The dy dynamis. Did they get the didanimous stamens? No, they look like they're all the same height. Anyway, erisimums are nice. And this serpentine one you see all over the... All over the serpentine area, but it looks like it's a little bit too, it's even too dry and exposed for this guy here, you know. It's pleasant right now, it's like 50 degrees, 60 degrees. Come here in three months, it'll be 110. You'll be goddamn roasting. Look at this. You don't even see him. Look at it. How's that phyto camouflage? That could be an erisimum too. Is that an erisimum? The basal leaves would look a lot different from the, uh, from those though. Maybe they're just the initial seed leaves. I don't know. Could be a viola, too. Maybe. There's a lot right there, but there's none anywhere else. Oh, there you go. A little areagonum. It's pretty impressive. Look at it.